Hello, welcome to True North Sanctuary. Today's video is going to be a tour of everything that has been built in True North Sanctuary so far. So we're just starting right in front of the guest spawner. We haven't been here since episode one and the guest spawner is just behind us over there leads to a pretend parking lot that doesn't actually exist <clears throat> and our guests enter the zoo up this ramp with the nice silhouettes on the wall here a little bit of a hint at some of the animals they might be seeing in the zoo um, and then we do have our rock wall over here with our signs warning people not to climb on the rocks and some statues of animals they might also see. So we have a raccoon, a wolf, a bison, our secret uh, little one that I asked people to look for in the first episode, the penguin, and the grizzly and the caribou or reindeer, which of those animals, the only ones we have in the zoo so far are the bison and the raccoon, but we will get there eventually. So here we have our beautiful logo for True North. Off to the side, there is a staff gate that leads down into the backstage. We'll do a backstage tour later, but for now we'll try to do everything um, as if we were guests coming into the zoo. So here we have some um, admission <clears throat> ticket booths pretend they do cover an ATM so people will use them um, in case you I don't know don't want to interact with anyone when buying tickets and over here is the entrance into the building where you can also buy tickets at the info center if you so choose um, some new additions to this lots of new additions since episode one I feel like my building skills have gotten a lot better since that episode um, but we do have a new floor in here it used to just all be concrete and I really didn't like how gray everything was so there's concrete on the floor now in front of the artist in residence wall, we have um, a little circle on the floor just to give it some extra. And then of these animals, obviously we don't have all of them in the zoo yet either, but we are slowly getting there as well. And here is our new sponsor wall. So last, um, yeah, last episode I asked people if they would like to sponsor to leave their name in a comment and some people actually wanted to sponsor very specific animals so I believe um, let's jump in here so this one raccoons sponsored by and American bullfrog sponsored by and I think all of these top ones actually had specific people red foxes red foxes pronghorns and so on so if your name is already on this wall and there's a specific animal that you would like to sponsor let me know in the comments and I will put that in and if you would like your name added to this wall please also leave a comment with whatever name you'd like on here and if there's a specific animal you would like to sponsor um, over here also new addition so we do have a big screen with a true north sanctuary trailer on it I'll put that at the end of this video if you'd like to see the whole thing it's maybe a minute long not super super extensive um, and then here we have the zones of the zoo. So Prairie Pathway and Woodland Walk are going to be part of today's tour, but Mountain Hike and Arctic Zone are still to come. So that's a little bit of a spoiler of the next things that we'll be adding to the zoo. Uh, we have our admissions board over here. Um, this uh, map holder, pamphlet holder, whatever you want to call it, I did create out of a lot of very small pieces. It just covers up the giraffe that sits on the info desk. It's hidden inside of there. Yeah, I think that's basically all of the new additions to here. Also some, some fire extinguishers on the walls. Yeah, and then we're good to go into the zoo. I do love how that mountain just rises up above the entrance here. So down there is our greenhouse and our staff buildings. We'll visit that later. Um, and then over here is where our mountain portion of 
these two will be, but that is under construction still. So let's head in to the zoo. Very private tour today, no guests running around. I find the leg is way too much. So this is the first um, enclosure that we built way back in episode four, and it is for the prairie dogs. The prairie dogs have been multiplying quite quickly, um, so I did have to put our lead male on birth control. But the prairie dogs are named after the top 10 dog names, I think, in Canada. So our male is Charlie, and then all of our female ones are names like Lucy and Daisy and Bella and Luna and all of those <clears throat> very stereotypical dog names that you would hear. As part of this enclosure, we do also have the underground viewing opportunity. So we're gonna go walk over there. We have the burrow here. So come see us in our burrow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some plants and information about them. Some of the things you would see in a prairie dog habitat some of the soil that you might see them burrowing through. And then this is their burrow cam. It is turned off right now because it makes everything flicker, but yeah, an opportunity to see what they do underground with a little seating area there as well for them, for guests. Here we have a little peek into the construction zone. But we're actually going to head down to the bison and pronghorn habitat and the viewing area specifically. So as we round the building here, we have a view onto the patio that is in front of their barn and the bison are out as are the pronghorns i just can't see them yet we do have a baby bison so this enclosure oh there he is <laughs> this enclosure is named after constellations because bison typically sleep out under the stars so we have andromeda taurus and perseus is our newest addition the pronghorns are Orion, Lyra, and oh no, Cassiopeia. Yes, they had a baby girl. Oh, we'll stay behind the glass just for safety purposes. But I can't see the pronghorns right now, so maybe we'll keep walking and see if we can see them. Before we do that though, there is a little educational section here as well. Just some of the plants found in this area and some information about them too. These lights over here light up some of the enrichment in the habitat so that when you're visiting at night, you can see it very well. Pronghorns, where are you? Oh, there's one back there. Just run, ran out of the building. That's very on par for visiting a zoo though. You want to see all of the animals, but sometimes they're just not cooperating. And that's okay. Oh, look at her go. So cute. Uh, behind us here, we have our first peek into the moose and beaver enclosure, but we're actually going to walk back down to the entrance to Woodland Walk and enter it through there. On top of the moose and beaver shelter, we do have a green roof. Um, we do have a pipe sticking out from the water filtration system, just so people can see that 
um, obviously the water is being taken care of, but also a little bit of education about, um, hey, like we're doing what we can and we are being environmentally friendly with it. Especially because this right here is the Lark Learning Center. I decided that I would name the buildings in this zoo after different birds because, well, I'm Sparrow and I thought it would be cool to keep that bird theme going throughout the zoo. So this is the Lark Learning Center. Um, so it's kind of cool to have that educational item right next to uh, the building because then if you have classrooms coming here or schools, um, then that's something you could point out to them. So we're just gonna head in here because I did decorate the interior and I did make it a classroom. So we have some cubbies on the walls here so kids can leave their backpacks some desks and chairs obviously we have bins with various things like pens and crayons and whatever else uh, we do have a terrarium on this front desk here oh some uh, grasshoppers crickets and other various bugs in there that the kids can look at um, a bin of crayons over here a smart board in the back so this does have wheels so you can move it around if you needed to yeah, there you go. Um, just a, a bin of sticky notes in the back here. And yeah. I do think this place could still use maybe some posters on the walls to brighten it up a little bit, make it a little bit more classroom-like. But overall, I am pretty happy with how this classroom turned out. All of these classroom items will be on the workshop as well if you would like to use them in your own zoo. Other than the terrarium that's already on the workshop, that is not mine, but that will be linked in my collection, which you can find a link to in the description. So yeah, that's the learning center. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get one more look at the pronghorns. Maybe they'll come out. Oh yeah, there we go. We can see them right through the bars here, or over the bars. I did also obviously put up education boards. These are not the habitat education boards. They're the TV screens. I believe they're the one meters because the two meters are just so big. So I made use of the one meter TV screens and I did put speakers in it, which I know is not necessary in sandbox but I like the education factor if you couldn't tell. So here is the entrance to Woodland Walk. We have our signage, prairie pathway down that way, Woodland Walk over to the left and then we do also have signs for bathrooms and food which are down that bridge over there. First we have a bullfrog and terrapin exhibit. The bullfrogs have not multiplied yet, but the terrapins have. I think there are now five of them in here. Um, they had only male offspring, <laughs> so that's all right. I'll have to keep the female. Over here we have red foxes. The red foxes had four kits, which is a lot. Um, this enclosure is named after characters from his Dark Materials, which was an idea by a commenter after I mentioned that Lyra was one of my favorite characters. Lyra is one of the pronghorns. So the parents are Marissa and Asriel, and their four kits are Pantalaemon, Stilmaria, Hester, and Ruta. I don't see them out here too, too often. They seem to actually prefer their indoor enclosure for whatever reason. Um, but the outdoor part, I think, is quite nice. And they do have the burrow in the back there that they can access as well. So let's head into the building. This is probably still my favorite educational space in this zoo with the headphones on the wall where you can listen to all uh, 20 of the different types of calls that red foxes make. And then here is the indoor part of their enclosure. So fake trees and leaves 
a mural in the background to make it look a little bit bigger, a little bit more interesting. Oh, hello. You can see one of the kits back there. Two of them. Adorable. And even this area here, it does have branches and fake trees all around to kind of make the guests feel like they're also part of this, maybe not enclosure, but the nature. And then we do have an owl in the corner there. Um, we will go into the backstage here because I don't think we'll get another chance to come down here later. So some storage and then the keeper entrance into the fox exhibit. And then over this way, we do have the moose and beaver backstage. So over here is where our beavers, oh, they actually use it. That's adorable. I haven't actually seen them in here very often. So this is where the beavers go when it gets too cold out. Over here we have our water filtration system that is sticking out into the roof. These switches on the walls um, are for the doors. So there's one on the end there, another one on, in the center, and then another one on the end. Here we just have some backstage clutter. So we have a um, bulletin board with some sticky notes and clipboards and such, a food prep table, and so on. Oh, Hello. I love watching the animals interact. It's one of my favorite things. So we are going to go see some more animals. So first we have to find our way out of here and all the way back to the top of the woodland walk. This is a little bit of a detour. Um, not the best planning on my part, unfortunately. Usually in zoos you don't want to have any dead ends, um, but it is what it is. First like big zoo that I'm doing, so there will be some things that I will want to change by the end, I'm assuming. <laughs> There's already a lot of things I've changed, so I'm sure it's just an ever-evolving project. Some bathrooms over to the side here. And we have our waterfall. You can see the entrance just over. And if we look this way, we can see all the way out over the moose and beaver habitat as well. I can't wait until that section behind there is filled out. I think it'll look a lot better without that big empty space back there. So. To our left, we have raccoons. Oh, and they've had babies. Last time I checked, she was still pregnant, so they must have had them while we were on this tour. That means it's unnamed, so if you have any name suggestions that fit the herb or um, fruit theme of this enclosure, let me know. The parents are paprika and basil. And it looks like they have two babies, maybe more. Let's check. Let's find out. How many babies did you have? There are two, oh, three of them. Three males. So paprika and basil are the parents and three new baby male raccoons. So herb or fruits that we could use to name them with. Over here we have more education about how the exhibits for the, or enclosures for the raccoon and skunks are actually gr greenhouses that have been repurposed. 
So that used to be the herb and fruit greenhouse, which is why those raccoons are named the way they are. And this was a flower greenhouse, which has largely been kept the same way um, because I really wanted to see the skunks walking through the big bushes of flowers and that's exactly what they do. So I'm very happy with how that turned out. We're going to backtrack just a little bit to make our way over to the butterfly trail. So down that way we can continue the woodland walk and grab some food, but over here we can see some butterflies, which are also multiplying like crazy, but that's nothing new. So. This section was the newest addition to the Woodland Walk and it is just planted up with a bunch of different flowers so that all the pollinators can come here and thrive. So some old world swallowtail and some monarchs in this one. You can see a monarch right on the butterfly house over here. So let's just take a little stroll through here. See if we can find some more butterflies. I love seeing them just fly through the open air. And I love that you can take the walls off of the exhibit boxes so that it looks like an open air exhibit like this one. Just a butterfly garden. So pretty. And now it's time for a little pit stop at the food truck plaza. Over here I have prepped a space for an eventual map of the zoo. And then there's little pamphlets that we saw in the entrance that you can pick up here as well. Um, but I think that'll be an addition after the mountain section is complete. Or maybe at the very end, we'll see. So here we have our food trucks. Just a nice little rest spot with some patio heaters where you can warm up in the winter or um, just grab something to eat in the summer. So we have Street Fox Coffee, Missy Good, and Monsieur Fritz. Oh, let's not dance on tables today, maybe. And this is just the gate that the food trucks can come in through. Um, and that leads to the delivery route behind there, which we will explore in just a little bit. But first, the moose and beaver. So to our right is the habitat, our swimming moose. I think the moose use this lake more often than the beavers. I see the moose in here every single time I walk past here. I do love just walking around my own zoo, I will admit that. And over here, Oh, right, we can't actually walk over this section of path because there's a path right underneath. I did get a comment on the moose and beaver that the clearance for the gate was too low for a truck and they were absolutely correct. So I kind of extended, there is another gate down here. We'll just hop down. So there is another gate right on the edge of the bridge and I just extended it so it's like a double gate feature where the animals first dropped off into this middle portion and then it's let into the enclosure. There is a max clearance sign on the tunnel over there as well now. <laughs> Thought that was a fun little addition. And then we're gonna have to hop over to this side oh, of that path. Perfect. So that we can continue over to the beaver lodge. Yeah, another educational space. Oh, and perfect timing. Aspen, you are amazing. Aspen is the female moose, alder is the male. And then our beavers are juniper and timber. But yeah, this is exactly what I was hoping for with this viewing area, just up close and personal. You can see the beaver pool here, uh, the lake. You also have the rubbing pillar all the way over there. So a very good view of all of the enrichment items or most of the enrichment items in this enclosure. 
Now over here we do have another education area, so some logs in the floor to give it a little bit of a beaver feel. <laughs> um, some benches sunk into the side, an educational beaver lodge, and then we have some birds up here that um, the beavers and the moose might share habitat with. And some information about tree rings and how to determine how old a tree is. And then, whoa, wash your eyes there. Um, you can also just skip the beaver lodge if you want, and there's a slanted path down the side there. Um, but yeah, that's basically everything in terms of enclosures. We're just gonna walk around a bit on this edge because this path does go all the way around the enclosure, so you do get a very good view of the moose and the beaver from basically all sides. So the eventual plan is um, the mountain section over there where you can see the chipboard wall that's going to be over there and then it'll lead back to the prairie pathway similarly to how the woodland walk does. And then this giant open space over here will be our arctic zone eventually. <laughs> but for now, let's hop over into some of the backstage areas. So we're going to start behind the moose and beaver enclosure with our delivery area and we're just going to take a walk up this tunnel that the truck has to drive through in order to get there. Oh. We have another max clearance sign over here and as we come out we have basically only forest to our right and to the left we come out behind the food truck plaza so the road down into that is just over here and that does also split to um, a delivery port at the back of the raccoon and skunk habitat so we're gonna check that out I did um, add that off camera I wasn't entirely happy with the interior of that building. So through this garage door, we can deliver things like hay and grass and whatever else is necessary. So that's just over here. And then here we have some backstage for the skunks as well as the entrance into the skunk habitat. And then over here we have holding areas for the raccoons and the entrance into the raccoon habitat. So we walk over here. We end up just over there was our road. And over here we can see the lake with the waterfall to the left. Well, we can't really see it. Let me just walk up so that we can see it and then to our right is that big backstage area right next to the entrance of the zoo there we go we can see the bridge a little bit through here And here is our big backstage area. So first we're gonna check out the greenhouse, which is right here. So we have some propagation stations over on the side, and then we have gardens. So we have all the fruits and veggies, maybe not all, but a bunch that we can feed to our animals to help offset the costs of the zoo if necessary. Which pro it probably is because zoos are expensive. <laughs> And then through here, we do have our staff rooms, our vet center, um, quarantine area. We have some water filtration stuff for that big lake as well, and so on. This has largely remained unchanged. Um, there are now fire extinguishers and like tool racks and stuff on the walls. I don't know if they were there before, but they are there now. And through here, we have the path up to the main plaza, 
as well as a shipping container. <laughs> Um, and then holding areas off to the side of that building that lead directly into the vet center and quarantine if necessary. Just over here. And just general warehouse storage. Plenty of workshop items back here, so if you're interested in things like uh, the bins, all of the different clutter, the crates, and all that, definitely check out that collection. And here we have a garage. This garage door is also very fancy and off of the workshop. Um, but yeah, this is where the Jeeps are kept. We have some custom cabinets in the back there. And some more storage all the way back here. Just a random assortment of items. Speaking of custom cabinets though, I did forget to go into the prairie dog and bison um, behind the scenes, so let's jump over there. So here is the prairie dog building, the entrance into the habitat, a little indoor nesting box area for them once it gets too cold outside. Prairie dogs are usually put, put away for the winter, I guess, um, because it gets too cold for them. And yeah, and then we have some more custom cabinets on the side here. We have some sinks with drains. I think this one has potatoes in it, if I remember correctly. Yep. <laughs> and a food prep table. That's the same one as in the moose and beaver backstage. And here we have the bison interior. I did update the gates so that they work for both animals. Um, the moose and beaver one I changed because it um, the moose couldn't get through it, so I put those updated gates in here as well. We finally got to see a pronghorn up close. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, and so there is the animal delivery door for this habitat. Um, still need to figure out how that road gets there, but that'll be a problem for the mountain hike portion because it's on that side of the zoo. So, and one more door over here, um, just to the bullpen slash feeding area in the bison enclosure. Thank you so much for joining me on today's tour of True North Sanctuary, and thank you so much for all of your support so far. I love reading all the comments and seeing that you're liking what I'm putting out. So if you would like to see more of True North Sanctuary and other projects, please do make sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Now I will leave you with the trailer for True North Sanctuary that I promised, and I hope you enjoy. See you next time. Bye.